Welcome. You're tuning in to Fallen Fruit, and today is our very first podcast. Today, we're talking about quantum hypnosis healing therapy, tarot, astrology, the dark goddess, and everything else in between. We hope you enjoy. So, hey, everyone. What's up? Uh, My name is Lynette, and I am a quantum healing hypnosis practitioner. And that simply is um, hypnosis work that deals with the subconscious. Um, Science shows that um, when we use hypnosis and when we get into this relaxed state, our brain waves change. And so what happens is, is we can kind of tap into our memories and our belief systems. And beyond that, we can actually tap into what we call the quantum field or um, the spirit realm. And so my work is to help people to connect with, number one, what may be stopping them, what their limitations are, what their fears are. And then beyond that, we can go to activating our gifts, our talents. And so it's really about bringing people completely online. So because I have some history with plant medicine, I've always wanted to pursue a technique that allowed people to go deeper that may not want to do a psychedelic or want to do take that route. So I actually found this technique and it, ass- it assists people in, again, bringing to the light what is in the dark. And when we can do that, you know, people can really power up and really align with what they're supposed to be doing. So that's my main work. I'm also a dancer. Um, I'm a ritualist, so I, um, I want to bring more of that, more of the ceremonial aspect um, of, you know, our ancient past, right? So they did a lot of uh, dancing and singing. And so what I'm here to do is I'm here to bridge the ancient with the modern. And so um, through dance is one of the ways that I do that. I'm also a mom. Um, I have a 20-year-old son, and um, I'm into traveling. So that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> and we've experienced the quantum technique yeah. facilitated we've by We've both Lynette. had it done. So we can attest that, like, yeah, it's dope, for real. Like, it opened up a lot of um, blocks that I was experiencing and um, – things that I know I needed to work to and just truths that I needed to say out loud um, and kind of give life to. And I was able to do that. So thanks. (laughs) Yeah, it's a really powerful technique. If anyone's interested in diving into their subconscious and, you know, really facing some of those programs kind of running in the background and getting clear on what they're saying, Lynette's technique is definitely for you. And, um, I know that, you know, just to tease people a little bit on (laughs) something that we did, um, the three of us did a quantum technique together and Stephanie came through with some very powerful messages for us. So um, you never know what's going to come through in this technique. And um, I know that in my one-on-one session with Lynette, some big, big breakthroughs came through that have been immensely helpful even up till today and we did that session what a year ago over a year ago yeah yeah Yeah. that's dope (laughs) yeah (laughs) so stephanie tell us a little bit about you um so i am a mom to uh an 11 and 9 year old they're both boys my little earth sons um and i'm also a poet um i work for a nonprofit where i'm able to teach um, poetry in high schools and things like that, Um, assist other artists and poets in getting work. Um, You know, it's really important as artists that we are able to to also eat off of that. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do away with the starving artist. Right. Um, So it's really dope to help that community um, that I'm such a big part of to even give back, not just my writing, but uh, my time and talents. I think talents. We'll see. (laughs) <laughs> I think um, yes <laughs> all right. and um, I do other writing like freelance articles you know I really love writing about um, my own culture and experience so it's dope that there are outlets out there that allow me to do that um, and then I'm also a tarot reader so that's kind of how I align myself with spirit um, and really try to dive deep learning the symbolism of the cards and just how they can help in everyday life and how they fit into you know the world that we live in now as opposed to maybe in ancient times what those meanings were you know mm-hmm. trying to put a modern twist on a ancient technique mm-hmm. um 
but yeah, I'm also all about getting into ceremony and doing rituals and just bringing the spirituality full full circle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I want to add that Stephanie is a revolutionary. Oh. She, you know, <laughs> one of the first, that was one of the first things I picked up from her is that she has this soft, beautiful heart, right? But she knows how to bring the fire when it's time. Yeah. So um, I, I can, I definitely <laughs> yes. know they're going to be doing some big things and I'm going to be right behind you. So, oh, that means you're super dope. So true. <laughs> I yes. do have Viva la Revolucion tattooed on my back. So no, like, there it is. I didn't at know 19, that. I was like, I got, I got the, you know, I was like, this is it. This is the mission. So <laughs> prayers up. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Now is the time. And what about you, Catherine, our resident astrology queen? <laughs> yeah. So I'm an astrologer. That's kind of my thing. And um, I'm also really passionate about ceremony and women gathering together. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to be sharing space with the two of you. And we've been sharing a lot of space lately, which <laughs> makes me so happy. Um, but yeah, I'm really passionate about women gathering and sacred space and sacred sisterhood. I'm really, really into that. Really grateful when I can plug into that. And um, as an astrologer, yeah, I'm always happy to talk about astrology. I love reading charts for people. I write horoscopes and I do lectures and um, word on the street is I'm going to be teaching kind of soon too. So <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know Catherine is um a quantum traveler yeah. Catherine was the very first person that I did a, a session with and I knew that the universe aligned me with her because she can kind of travel out there and Catherine is um she can kind of really tap into you know the field and the information that's out there that's in the unseen so yeah yeah. I think your eye is really open. <laughs> oh, sometimes it. it's like too open. It's all bug eye, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the in my brain is just one big eye. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Yeah. So um, let's get into some questions. I yeah. I have some questions for you all. Okay. So Stephanie, how long have you been keeping an altar? Um, I mean, I think ever since. I was a kid like I just intentionally would put things places and I always kind of um, collected trinkets and things from my parents. I would like find things in my mom's room and you know I had this um, my dad's like Italian so like straight straight off the airplane. Uh, <laughs> and when I was 10 months old, my parents took me back to Italy to meet. That's where all of his family is. So we went back to meet them and we got like this um, plastic bottle that looks like the Virgin Mary. And it's just filled with holy water from the Vatican. So that was always on the center of my dresser with like little stones, little itty bitty things. I was really into um, Egypt and archaeology when I was little. So I had tiny pyramids and like God and goddess statues. So... I think, yeah, ever since I was a kid, I've just been always like, on. I let me put shit places. <laughs> Intentionally. <laughs> Intentionally. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Lynette, do you keep an altar? I do. I think for me, it was more like maybe like five or so years ago. I grew up in Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's interesting. A lot of people in this field talk about that. You know, they've been kind of tapped in. I don't think I was unless I don't remember. Um I actually had an Akashic record reading and I was going through this really kind of deep kind of karmic relationship. And she suggested that I create this altar and have this like ritual to kind of dissolve some of that attachment. And so that was kind of like my first exposure to it. So cool. Yep. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait. So, um, I want to know a little bit more. So what did someone bring you in contact with this, uh, Akashic record reader or how did that work? Hmm. Let me think back. I honestly do not remember. It was, she definitely, she wasn't local. So it was someone that I actually just connected with over the phone. And I think it was through a local reader. Now that I'm thinking back, I think it was uh, Cynthia. Her name is Cynthia. She actually has a store in Chagrin Falls. Oh. And she does. You guys was know it that like um, all matters store? Yes. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure okay. the recommendation came from her. Okay. 
I may have had a reading from her as well. That's yeah. That's dope. Yeah. She was one of kind of one on like in my beginning, like in the beginning of this mm-hmm. like path, so to speak. She was one of the first people that I connected with. So interesting. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in Sugar and Falls and my my grandparents still live there. And um, my grandma may have connected me with her. I know I had an Akashic record reading gifted to me from my grandma. Mm-hmm. Um So segueing into that. (laughs) So my grandparents are magical. They, so that's how I kind of got onto this path a little bit. Um, It's not that they gave, you know, it's not like they led me to this path. Um, I started to find the path and then they were kind of there and I started realizing like, oh, you guys have these books on your bookshelf. You guys have astrology books on your shelf and you Mm -hmm. guys have jesus the and the aquarian age on your bookshelf (laughs) and you guys have jane channeling seth um like the seth chronicles or whatever that book was it was like a really big um it was a popular book in the 80s or 90s about someone channeling another Mm -hmm. being so yeah my grandparents are into that they were like astral projecting and like (laughs) well yeah well that um brings me to another point is it's like you know as women uh when we like your children that you carried in your womb they came from the egg that you were born with right so your children were also in your mother's womb so i i feel connected to my grandma in that way Mm. because i know that i grew in my mom's body Mm -hmm. but i began in my grandmother's right that's crazy to think like I mean, I know that's true and that's like science, but like I've never thought about it to that level. Right. Right. Yeah. Damn, like that see, literal she's level. got the knowledge. <laughs> right. And you know, they also say that that like connection kind of skips. So like we have a connection deeply with our grandparents. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. like we have this connection with our parents, but there's something about my grandmother too that yeah is like super special to me. So I'm I'm wondering what that's about too. Mine was like my grandfather and grandmother. Yeah. But yeah. I want to know. All right. Yeah. yeah. We've got to figure that one out. All right. Tell me, tell me, what's your connection to your grandparents? Um, my grandma, so she was like just a badass, like Scorpio, uh, the <laughs> oldest of 11 kids. And like her mom died really young. So she had to like step into that role really early. Um, she was tough, like definitely handed out the whoopings with the chancla and uh, <laughs> how you many know, did you get how many chancla whippings did I, you get? Uh, too many to count one time she hit me with a knife <laughs> oh, and I was like I'm pretty sure you just stabbed me and she's like yes no stab and I was like oh okay you wrote a poem about this I did recently. write a poem about it I did because I was like that's kind of that's funny because uh, yeah. that's like one of my favorite stories about her um, that she was tough but like she like dinner was done every day at three and it was like you know this Puerto Rican meal that she spent since like 9 a.m. cooking you know <laughs> we were our lunches were always packed she was just we were decked out when it came to the seasons had the mittens the scarf the hat like she was on it you but were ready she uh, was definitely tough and she liked to dance and party she was a good time but people were like oh your grandma told it like it was and you know what that means she was like big bitch energy and i love it i love that <laughs> i was too. thinking bitch but i'm glad you said that, yeah right? you're like i can't call somebody right. else's grandma a bitch because i'm like what you say scorpios <laughs> can definitely be bitches yes. right. yeah she was like real tough and my grandpa was like the lover like you know he would try to like you know put his hands on her when she was laying down she's like get off me <laughs> <laughs> what about your grandma lynette my grandmother, okay, so her father owned a farm in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. and she always tells the story that when she was in third grade, she had to quit school because she had to actually cook and prepare meals for the workers. Wow. So that was a really big thing. Like, even mm-hmm. she's 90 years old, and she still talks about that. So wow. she felt slighted. Yeah. Um, my grandmother's the type of person that if, if there's a person that doesn't like her, I question that person. She's like super just beautiful. She has like this heavenly angelic energy to her. And when she's not talking, she sings all the time. So it's almost like I always feel like she's like in two worlds at once. Mm. Um, She was deeply spiritual, religious. So she wasn't into like the esoteric or 
but um, she just had this, like, if she puts out a prayer, you can pretty much bank on whatever the prayer was. It's, it's done. Wow. Um, so she just was really beautiful, and she was just the type of person that always, it was always about her husband, her family. Mm-hmm. And now that she's in her 90s, she's lost her filters. So she went from, like, being, like, super, like, it's about everyone else and now she just if she says something or she thinks something she'll say it <laughs> she doesn't really care so i think she's earned it yeah that's all i feel like at that age you can say whatever whatever and like that cool yeah all right that's yeah. how you feel right like you've earned that right yeah like i'm just trying to get there yeah she'll yeah. ask you like yeah. super personal questions like oh does your son's father pay child support or like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you're like as a matter of fact grandma <laughs> That's that crone energy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I've done the work. I can say what I want. Chill out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know that like they already have the answer half the time. They're just like trying to get you yeah. to say it basically. Yeah. yeah. She calls people out. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Speak their mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So. So, um, Stephanie, you write a lot of poetry. I How, do. Have you always <laughs> written poetry? Um, again, since I was, like, younger. I used to write, like, short stories um, when I was, like, 10. I was really obsessed with, like, books on tape and just books in general. And I was mm-hmm. like, I could do this. And mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I started keeping a notebook and just, like, writing short stories. Um, and then as I became, like, a teenager, I carried a book around, which just was like I guess you could say poems but mm-hmm. in my head they were like punk emo song lyrics because mm. <laughs> yeah I was that kid <clears throat> and I was like super um, angsty and wrote poems that were way too fucking dramatic um, you know all those teenage feelings but yeah I had that book I had it for a while I think I actually I don't know if I threw it away recently because I was like, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> no, it was really like it was a bit much. I understand. <laughs> I once. So I've kept a journal my whole life. Like yeah. I could catalog my entire life through journals, except I had this one journal from when I was in high school and I threw it away because I thought I was like purging a part of myself yeah. or like taking control of my life mm-hmm. and like deleting that chapter basically but i wish i had it now it was i so do deep. remember a lot of them that's the weird thing is like i have these poems memorized because even so i had my kids really young so i was 21 when i had my oldest son um that's not like really really young i was 21 yeah but i mean like that's young mm-hmm. yeah um so i would keep the notebook and I would go back to it and I would like read it all the time. Mm -hmm. And, but I wasn't writing because I was just, I couldn't get there. Like emotionally I was so into like, I have this baby. Like, let me, I have to make sure it stays alive. Of (laughs) course. (laughs) So like, that was like, my brain didn't have time for anything else. I feel like, um, so I definitely got away from it for a while. And then once the kids were a little bit older, it was a few years ago that I was like, let's do this again. Mm-hmm. And I really and I haven't looked back. It's been like crazy the past few years, like getting things published and like saying like, oh, I'm going to get published in that zine like this year. And then it happened. Um, and then feeling confident enough to put out like big submissions that I'm still waiting on. So fingers crossed. y'all. Um, yeah. But like being asked to go like read, you know, in New York. And I was like, yeah. And you work with some teens, too. Yes. So I work, the nonprofit I work for, you know, we're all about, like, youth voice. Um, So going, especially into the schools here in Cleveland, where it's, like, largely communities of color um, that don't necessarily get, you know, a lot of arts funding. We do one high school where they have no art class. Like, no creative, nothing. They don't even have a sports team. They do, like, intramural sports against each other. Hmm. So it's, like, really, it's all focused on, like, computer and math. Um, but still it's just, so we were able to come in and like take over their English class like two days a week and get these kids to like write poems and just like share their stories and share their experiences and expose them to like modern poetry, you know, because a lot of the things they're taught in like high school English classes are, um, 
about like old, you know, just like dead white man poets yeah. or like Emily Dickinson. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So being able to show them like poets that look like only like look like them, but like share experience with them, come mm-hmm. from places like them. Um, so that's really dope. So that work is like, that's my heart for sure. I love yeah. that. I that's mean, the awesome. spirit as well. Like I want to find a way to kind of like merge that all into yeah. one like let's heal the world yep. yeah yeah because that's encouraging <laughs> yep. for people to learn if there's if there's something that calls their interest something mm-hmm. that they can relate to yeah yeah that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so lynette how did you get into the quantum healing so just to take a step back actually when i was like 15 i started to experience like super intense depression I went from like Catholic school and then I went to like a public school so that Mm. was like it was just a big change for me and so um I got out of high school and I just started to kind of look at like what is happening like why do I feel like this like I just I just started to really I was trying to understand it and so um, I had a friend who when I was like in my early 20s um put me on to Iyala Vanzant and um, I read one of her books and I just really resonated with her. And so I started just doing this deep dive of like mind body connection, you know, um, what is this internal journey that I'm experiencing? It's like, why is it that I'm feeling this way no matter what my life looks like on the outside? And so fast forward again, I actually um, went to a school, a metaphysical school that was out on the West Coast and um, it just really gave me a really great overview of different religions and different ways of life. And this, the person that actually founded the school ended up opening up a retreat center in Ecuador. And so um, that was, that began my um, plant medicine journey. And I always tell that story because once I started having those ceremonies, I wanted to bring that kind of healing to other people knowing that the plant medicine ceremony wasn't for everyone you know not everyone wants to do psychedelics not everyone understands it a lot of people are afraid of it and so i wanted to figure out how can i act as the psychedelic how can i be the catalyst and then i came into the work of dolores cannon and she used to do hypnosis back in like the 60s when it was just used for like weight loss quitting Mm. smoking (laughs) and she started seeing people pop into past lives and not only having these memories but their personality would change in the session um, the way they spoke would change in the session so she started you know she looked at herself as like a scientist like she was really curious and she started to try to understand like what is happening here and so she started uh, being able to gain access to information about ufos and um, metaphysics and people were experiencing like instant healing, all of that. And so when I came across the work, I knew that that was it. Like this technique will take us beyond just talking about something, you know, talk therapy is fantastic. And then there's a limit, you know? And so um, once I actually came across the work and I also identified with the idea of being, you know, just open-minded, like what is like an explorer of consciousness. And so I I started to do, you know, I started to practice the technique and it was just amazing to see people. We we all have access to this information and to be able to see it, to see people access this information, to see people um, figure out why they have certain fears, people letting go of like sex addictions, you know, or pain in the body um, or understand why they were afraid to go outside because they got hit by a car in a past life and they were carrying this fear of being you know Mm -hmm. just these crazy things so that's how I came across it's just trying to figure out how to heal and I also I want to understand how this universe works yeah you know like what what is going on behind the scenes yeah yeah I know that um you know in our session um I had something like pretty traumatic happen to me and I was processing um basically some mourning around friendships and I was taken into a past life where I was a warrior and this was like so vivid and when you're a warrior in ancient times like you depend on your friends 
your friends are the only family you have yeah. and you are loyal to one another and you have each other's back no matter what it's like and for death yeah it was and that's why i felt so like i got stabbed in the heart when i got betrayed by some friends and i couldn't figure out like you know why is this hitting me so hard but that past life review was just it was so powerful it was so powerful and now i have understanding but all these other questions too like how you know what i mean like about this technique and about past lives and all of that yeah Yeah, it's really the way i look at it is like i think that most of us don't understand how to use this human vessel to its capacity you know we we've been taught like you eat food you drink water you go to sleep you go to work but really man there's so much more so much more right and so it's just for me it's about helping people unlock their own situation like you know it's great when someone can tell us and answer our questions but I feel like when you're able to do it yourself and you're able to experience it there's something about that that I think is is needed and I think that when people experience that type of um kind of out of body or at least out of this life that we see I think people become more confident Mm -hmm. And people begin to understand, like, I'm a lot more than I thought I was. I have a lot more power. I have access to a lot more wisdom. And so it's just empowering, I think. Very. It's like you being accountable. Um, You know, people can tell you things, but it's like, it's always like until you go through it. Um, So it's like, it does. I can attest because I have also had um, a session with you and it was like, oh, like I'm standing in my own damn way. Right. Uh, you know, let me get out of my way mm-hmm. and like do the things I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like wh- who manifests this fear? It's like I do. Mm-hmm. You know, this fear isn't coming from some outside source. Mm-hmm. It's all internal. So like you said, it's like taking a step into that consciousness where you get out of the wheel that mm-hmm. we're all sort of stuck in because society and capitalism and <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and like so yeah so like once we can step out of that mindset of being in that wheel and having to survive because essentially it's like we can't get out of that mindset all the time like we right. have to grind right. um but when you are able to take those moments take those few hours and be like oh shit like mm-hmm. then yeah. i feel like you can really unlock some powerful mm-hmm. door Totally. And that's actually something I've been thinking a lot about lately is like you have to grind. And sometimes like, for example, like I'm working a lot, but I like everything I'm doing, but it still takes a toll on you a little bit. You know, I'm happy reading for clients. I also do hair. I'm happy to do people's hair, but I'm taking on a lot of psychic debris. And Mm -hmm. even when you're on your phone, like you're taking in a lot of information. And so we need consciousness we need you know things that go beyond the surface things that go a little bit deeper so that we can do some more of that clearing and and create stillness to be with our consciousness so one of the most powerful things that I've experienced and can experience regularly for like maintenance and everything I think going deep with quantum sessions and plant medicine and um you know beyond like that is really really good if you want to get like you know if you want to go in right (laughs) um but like for maintenance and everything kundalini yoga has been really powerful for me because there's a lot of techniques that we use with like breath and mantra and all these different things are basically to get your mind to pause and you do get into that subconscious space and you Mm -hmm. figure yourself out a little bit and you Mm -hmm. kind of you know sometimes you do a practice that's so potent that you're just like man I just went to therapy just yeah. now like I yeah. cleared some shit right <laughs> and you store stuff in your body too so mm-hmm. you mentioned you know you've you've been able to help people clear out chronic pain in their mm-hmm. body you know but we need modalities available mm-hmm. to us and I, I wish everyone could have access yeah and I think making it more popular and also you know um like the commodifying of spirituality some people feel heavy against but i think it's important um so that it becomes accessible Mm -hmm. so that you know 
like Lynette and I have talked about, you know, knowing who to charge, when to charge, what to charge, and being aligned with that Mm -hmm. so that you can when people need help um, and maybe they're not able to afford it. Mm-hmm. that it can still have access to it, that there's always a way. Right. Um, we we find that with, you know, like Western medicine and hospitals and Medicare, and it's like, well, maybe if they could cover these things that we know make us feel good right. inside and outside. Yeah. Like, we have all seen the effects. If anybody's, right. like, on their spiritual path and, like, yeah. takes it seriously and um, tries to stay up on it or even intends to, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes – somebody's dealing with chronic pain they Mm -hmm. don't they're like I can't do a moon ceremony or Mm -hmm. you know a clearing bath or things like that like I'm tired right but maybe even sitting down and like making a tea with intended herbs and just like getting on the couch and Mm -hmm. like writing it out you Mm -hmm. know just the intent I feel like intention behind everything yeah is how we can kind of move yeah this kind of healing and things like that forward like you know yeah tarot is my way right I would love to find a way to just make it accessible. I encourage people, you know, who I read for. I'm like, go get your own deck, you know. Right. You can find them for, they have deck swaps. They have, you know, used ones. Yeah. Um, get one and just tap into it yourself. Play with your intuition. Mm-hmm. Like, build that relationship. Yeah. I think we're moving into a time that we're taking more responsibility for our own well-being. And I think that... Um, I encourage people to invest in themselves. And I know that, you know, for someone it could be $20, for someone else it could be 300, and we have to find what works for us. But I think that uh, many of us will spend money on, you know, going out to eat and getting our hair done and Mm -hmm. our nails done. But when someone is offering a service that could help them at the soul level, that sometimes we don't want to spend money for that. It's Mm -hmm. so abstract. Right. Yeah. But I think we're coming into a place where people are realizing that no one is coming to save you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> we've got to, we've got to help each other. Right. Yeah. It's not like we're out here by ourselves, but we have to take some some responsibility. Yeah. yeah. And I think that one of the reasons why people are moving more toward that is because of the, you know, socio political climate that mm-hmm. we're in, mm-hmm. you know, when healthcare <laughs> is so damn expensive and right. it's like, all right, well this doctor is spending ten minutes with me and I don't really feel heard. And so we're finding that healing in other ways. Mm-hmm. Just praying to the ancestors sometimes. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> help Listen, me out. <laughs> let me get a teaspoon full of honey, some cinnamon yeah. and a prayer. Yeah. That's my healthcare plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And and you know, I think Western medicine has segregated, you know, the the mind, the body. Mm-hmm. And so now we're coming into a place where we're understanding like, yo, these emotions are it's creating some sort of like disharmony you <laughs> yeah. know what yeah. i mean so oh, yeah yeah big time yeah big time yeah we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there we're getting and the there. dark goddess can help us yes Yo. i think i think it's time i think the cards are calling the cards all right so we have this um dark goddess deck so there are different goddesses from all sorts of different um Backgrounds, cultures, places, um, civilizations. Uh, it's a beautiful deck. I, it's actually called the Dark Goddess Oracle Cards. Um, so, Catherine, you're going to go first. Oh. You're going to, like, cut it up. All right. Infuse that energy. Chop it up. Yeah, I can hold it. Okay. <laughs> Just once? Uh, do what feels right. Oh, okay. We're You're all putting charge. our energy into yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you've got to draw yours. Okay. <laughs> Arishka Gale. Ooh, Arishka Gale. Yes. Do you so know about this guy? I know about I'm Arishka Gale. Not... Okay. Yeah, she is from... Mesopotamia, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? It said Sumerian, but yeah. Yeah, Sumerian. So, yeah. Yeah, I know a little bit about Arishka Gale. There's the um, little guidebook that came with it. Her, um, okay, so I'm just going to read her subtext here. It says that Arishka Gale represents coercion, forcing to conform, enticement, 
in its darkest form. Never jump to each demand. Threats be gone. Now take a stand. By the power of the dark goddess in me, protection in place, blessed be. Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like the sound of that. So. Ooh, she's making that heater go. Oh. She's like, I'm here. <laughs> Tell them about me. <laughs> so I remember a story about Arishka Gale. Um, one of the first astrology conferences I went to, a woman named Claudia Bader was giving a lecture on Pluto mm. and the underworld. So Aris- Arishka Gale has to deal has to do with the underworld, mm. and there is an ancient story about her. I wish I could remember it. I'll have to. I'll have to check back. You have to no, circle you're fine. back on That's that. okay. Yeah. You want to sit with that card? We can go to like so. Lynette can pick yeah, hers, let's and do then that. Let's, let's sit that. with the cards for a minute, and then we'll come back. And that sounds good. I'm going to read on this yeah. for a second. The cards are like gilded silver on the side, and it I looks like really that. dope watching Lynette shuffle them. I was noticing that because yeah. also her fingernails are this like amazing <laughs> turquoise color. So, all right, so the Morrigan, ooh, sovereignty. So I've never heard of this before. Morrigan, I I've read, so I read a book. Um, it was actually oh. it was a controversial book. It was called Witches of America. Okay. It was by Alex Marr. And it was controversial because she really befriended these women, um, telling them that, you know, she was interested in the craft. Craft. I don't know why. What happened to those letters? (laughs) Um, And following the path and, like, learning. And it kind of just turned into this, like, book of just, like, talking about people's lives and telling their personal stories. And it... She was like still wasn't convinced at the end. So it was a little, you know, I don't know. I guess you have to read it for yourself and decide. There was also a movie that went with it. Mm -hmm. But one of the women that she was following around and like kind of staying with and um, uh, talking to was a woman who was a priestess of the Morrigan. And she had her own like taxidermied crow that she kept like. The crow is um, a really big symbol, and she's like a warrior. Isn't this like a Germanic? I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, this woman was, you know, out in the wilderness. Yeah, I feel like that that <laughs> name is similar to like Not Morgana Le Fay yeah. from the King Arthur stories. But oh, yeah, uh, Morgana, that that is like a a name that you hear a lot of variations of. Okay, so it's almost like the name Mary in the Christian tradition. Like there's a lot of Marys. Like Mary could almost mean Mar, like body of water, you know, mm. like woman. Mm-hmm. So um I'm wondering if the Morrigan is like kind of in that vein. What what jumps out for me is that I was just telling them a story earlier, um, about a situation that kind of pissed me off. But <laughs> um this is talking about kind of knowing when to take a stand and what not to and you know i'm a pisces sun and moon sagittarius rising so there's always this internal battle like when i was younger i think i just was like that fire Mm -hmm. like i would just you know i'm going in i'm going to react i'll think about it later and then as i started to try to be more aware and (laughs) conscious you know then i started to kind of really taper down and try to be compassionate and I feel like I'm at this point where I want to marry the two. Mm-hmm. I want to yeah. know when to bring the fire and when not. And I'm still not clear because my initial reaction to a lot is to just go for the head. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I yeah. don't want to do that. But I also think that with that hesitation, I sometimes allow things to go when I should not allow things to kind of just go. 
Oh, I can relate to that. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to figure that one out. I mean, is it almost like, could you tailor a response that you feel like, here's my way of telling them off, but in a way that people aren't going to like get on social media and be like, hey, yo, Lynette's a healer, <laughs> but she crazy. <laughs> she crazy. <laughs> you know what? I, I really, I feel like I've got to figure it out. Yeah. I really do because I feel like I always think about why someone does something right Mm -hmm. so it's like oh they're doing that because you know they're in fear (laughs) but sometimes i'm like fuck that like you can't cross me like that though like that's not cool like you can't you can't just do that yeah um and sometimes sometimes when you come from a really loving place people don't regard that and honor that um when they feel like they can just do whatever right and so anyway yeah yeah some people take that as like almost like weakness you know being nice which is a shame because Mm -hmm. it would be great i would love to just be nice all the time i would love that (laughs) but that doesn't work no that does not work sometimes you have to you know coming from a place of love tell someone that they're being shitty yeah so that they can grow yeah and chances are they know it they Mm -hmm. know it Mm -hmm. i mean i'm really i guess bad at that too like i'll i'll come out the neck kind of crazy to people (laughs) and i don't have a filter because i feel like the sag sun sagittarius yeah aries rising oh it's just like double fire right and the tongue just it's like uh, you give it to them yeah but then in the libra moon it's like no pipe down like balance you can't always react like that only sometimes (laughs) yeah (laughs) sometimes sometimes all right. I got to read up on this card, though. I what did you reading. get? I got Tiamat. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. I've heard of her before, but I don't Tiamat. know. She might be Sumerian as well. I think uh, Tiamat is like ancient, ancient. Yeah. Right. Ancient. I'm about to find I almost feel like that's associated with an Anunnaki, but I, I yes. could be wrong. Am I no, right? You're right. Okay. You're right. You're is right. Oh. I, feel, I, I mean, feel like I'm that. getting those vibes from this card, but I got to. It's like in the back of the book. And Here it is. Okay. Um, so she is Babylonian. So she, the card says control. She has this dope, like, dragon draped over her neck. She looks like, yeah. Whoa. Girl with the dragon persona. Whoa. Um, So it said she dwelled in the ocean. She gave birth to the first generation of creation beings, dragons and serpents, which is crazy because I've been for, like, the past two years, like serpents and snakes have been following me. Mm. So I did um, a little vision quest um, like two New Year's ago. Right. And I, I use DMT. DMT. Okay. DMT. Okay. DMT. DMT. <laughs> okay. DMT. I don't know who's listening. Uh, the government's <laughs> going to come for me. Um, the Babylonians. So, yeah. So and that you kind of travel through this tunnel yeah. um, to get to this like big visualization and this journey that essentially happens in like 15 minutes, but it feels like a lifetime. Right. So anyway, you travel, essentially. People talk about a tube. So mm-hmm. mine was always black snake skin, like mm. black snakes just like in and out of each other. Mm-hmm. And they've been following me. Um, I even found a little plastic black snake on a sidewalk in Chicago when I was mm-hmm. just walking down the street. Mm. Of course, I picked it up. Like my altar is mostly like things I found on the sidewalk and trash. Um, cool. <laughs> That's a Scorpio. Thing. Yeah. But um, she so serpents and upon her death, hold on, her body was used to form the land and sky, ensuring her influence over all beings that inhabit Earth. Tiamat lives on via the forces of nature. So it's about um, reclaiming your self power, investigating paths, past lives to heal fears of persecution. Mm. So I think that's like a universal thing because I feel like as women, Mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest things we Mm -hmm. because our creation story says that. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. like we're taught that from jump. Yeah. Like, no, you're the problem. Like what you did. Yeah, it's a it's a power thing. I know that Mm -hmm. as I've explored my past lives, a lot of it revolved around a power struggle between the masculine and the feminine. Um, So, you know, a man would come in and, and kind of trick me out of my power. And then I would be in the next life. I would be a prostitute and then I would abuse the man and use my sexuality to kind of you know, manipulate him and steal from him. So Ooh. it's like, yeah, you're like a back. Robin, like a, you know, <laughs> yeah. Robin hooker. Yeah. Hey, I, I love it. I was, I was good at it. Okay? Yeah. But the thing is, is that, 
<laughs> so yeah, there was a lot of, for me, there was a lot of trauma, a lot of violence. Um, so that's why a lot of women I feel have, um, we have a challenge in knowing when to use our power, when it's appropriate, when it feels good, when it's not coming from a place of like, like we're being triggered, but mm-hmm. we're, we're consciously using the power. So I think a lot of us have, um, kind of some work to do around that, at least some awareness. Um, so yeah, a lot of that power struggle thing. Yeah. And, um, speaking of this, I think it kind of leads into, um, another big thing that we've been talking a lot about is like one of the bigger creation myths that you know pervades a lot a good chunk of the world and um in the jewish faith they recognize that before eve there was lilith Mm -hmm. and that's something that we have been talking a lot about lately Mm -hmm. um which i definitely want to get into but tiamat I believe in the Babylonian tradition, wasn't she like the earth goddess? I don't know. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar. We're going to have to like we're gonna have to look that up. Here. Yeah. yeah, we are. We're going to have to come back next time with like book reports right. on each of our goddesses. Yep. Yes. Totally. We should. We sh- that's what we should do. We should spend time that's what with we're each do. of our cards. I like okay, it. We'll I do love that. it. Until we get through the whole deck. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um. And I think that's a really great segue into um, something that we're going to be working on. Um, we're going to be holding a, a retreat soon and we're going to have some more solid details coming. But, you know, we has, you know, as Catherine has said, we've explored and have connected with Lilith. And um, I think Catherine, she, she's going to talk a little bit about her story and then Stephanie's going to talk about her story. What we did is we did a, a quantum healing um, session where we intended to connect with Lilith to understand her story. Who is she? Um, what was her message? What was her story? We we want to not only just dig for our own personal information, but we want to be kind of an advocate. We want to bring information to other women because, as you'll hear in the in the stories that they share, you know, we all have that theme in some way. So um, a lot of times when we have certain experiences or we have our dark night of the soul or we have our challenges, our challenges, we don't understand why it may be happening. We may feel isolated. We may feel like we did something wrong or we're, we're missing the mark. But when we begin to understand that many women have gone through these stories or these challenges just in different ways, um, there's something that we can take and feel a sense of peace and a sense of just, okay, this isn't just me not aligned mm-hmm. in my life. This is just something this is something that we that we deal with and it goes back to Lilith. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically for anyone who isn't familiar with Lilith, so in the Bible, first of all, the Bible was written by men. Sorry if you don't agree, then this show isn't for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so it was written by men and it's been translated and redacted and edited over and over again to fit the political and social agendas of whoever's in power. And we all went to school and we learned about Henry the Eighth, like basically like changing it for his own like lustful conquests, you know. But anyway, so we know that that is a truth. And again, in the Jewish tradition, they're familiar with Lilith. So in the Christian Bible, Adam, there's Adam and Eve and Eve is made from Adam. Well, before that, Adam and Lilith were made as equals. And then Lilith was like, come on, bitch, let me ride you. <laughs> and he's like, no, this work. <laughs> I don't want none of that because I don't feel like a big man. And yeah. so she was like, fuck that. You don't know what you're missing because my pussy is popping. Yeah. She was HBIC energy like all day. And yeah. Adam was not ready. He was not ready. He was like, God. <laughs> yeah. He was uninitiated and he was a fool and he doesn't know what he's missing. Yeah. Wait, in Lilith's words, he's a dick. He's a dick. <laughs> she did. Well, you know, we'll yeah. get to that. She said it. But. She said it. <laughs> And um, so anyways, Lilith decided to leave 
she wasn't happy. She's like, I'm not going to be in a relationship where I'm not valued, where I'm not an equal. And then Adam basically like whined to God, according to the story. And then they were like, all right, fine. And so they like, <laughs> I like how like <laughs> heaven has a human resources department. And they're like, <laughs> complaint filed. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then they like, supposedly, according to the story, made Eve out of Adam's rib. Um, but I think that that could even be debated. But totally anyways, debated. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the, the, Big takeaway from this story is that, you know, most women who go to Catholic school and a lot of us did, you know, I, I went to after school Catholic yeah, school I as did. well. Yeah. The whole, all of them, the sacraments. Yeah. And they <laughs> teach that we're lesser than, and that mm-hmm. our role is to serve. And I think that that kind of distorts a lot of our perception as we mature and start to have relationships and it just, it definitely distorts it. Even if, right. even if you don't fully subscribe to it. So yeah. anyways, it's like a huge eye opener to discover this being Lilith, this archetype of Lilith, who is the dark goddess, you know, because she's been shunned and bullshit has been light, you know, the story basic her story hasn't been told and also her story has been twisted you know in some mm-hmm. traditions she's like a a succubus yeah like demon. a demon yeah who like will come kill your children right and like fuck your dude at night like yeah <laughs> she's like the worst side piece ever yeah. She gonna eat your baby and fuck your man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the worst but side. Like, hashtag that's like the, the worst, worst side piece ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's how they made her out to be. Like if you, ooh, sorry, if you are powerful, if you do kind of take your own agency into your own hands and say like, I will not stand for this. Um, you're seen as like a difficult woman, a bitch, you know, crazy. Yeah. People like to say nasty woman. It's like, well, mm-hmm. the, whatever you want to call it, bad bitch. That's L- Lilith energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And basically we're connecting with Lilith because people are ready to connect with Lilith. Like mm-hmm. some of these names that we're saying like bad bitch energy, you know, people are ready for that. Mm-hmm. There's a need for it. Yeah. Right. It's already being exhibited. Like, right. you know, people are like on the internet and, mm-hmm. you know, making these memes and it's like, yeah, like these Beyonce, these blue Ivy memes. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, like I'm in charge. I am mm-hmm. not lesser than mm-hmm. I am. I'm equal to, Mm-hmm. But I'm also more than mm-hmm. like I created you. I right. didn't come for your rib. You came from my womb. So it's much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like to me, when you can embrace that type of energy, you also have the strength to be submissive when you want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to always be like, I want to just go against the grain for the sake of right. going against the grain. It's like, listen, like I can be in my power, but I also if I'm with a man that I feel honors me and I can I can kind of let my hair down a little bit, and let him lead. And I trust him. I'm okay with that. Like, it's okay. Like, we can play both roles. So I think that sometimes when we talk about this energy, people always think, like, that's where you stay. Right. You're, like, in that energy all the time. That's not true. This is just about being able to flow in and out of that and also to understand that part of ourselves, right? Right. Because a lot of us, when you shun something and you don't want to, like, look at it it tends to fester and manifest in the most terrible ways. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So this is just about bringing that to the surface, integrating it, understanding ourselves more. And I think that when we can understand ourselves a little bit more, we don't judge people as much. Yeah. It's just like, yo, that's just, that's just Catherine. Like that's kind of how she is. It's not like that gives you like a ticket to just be like an asshole to people, (laughs) but it's just like, no, like we understand like, yo, that's just how she is. And we're going to let her do that. Like, that's just, that's just what it is. So I just, I think it just helps us to understand ourselves more and it helps us to get along with people better. Yeah. I I think especially during this like rise of consciousness around like, Lilith and the divine masculine and feminine and the equal balance of those two energies because we all have them. Mm -hmm. I think that's why society freaks out about, you know, like 
our trans brothers and sisters right. and like non-binary folks mm-hmm. and people who are just non-gender conforming right and like throwing that whole notion out the window like i can be fucking both right i could be one one day i could be one the next day exactly. like i could flip the script like it is mine it right. is fluid right and people um freak out about it because they're mm-hmm. like oh that's not the way the bible intended mm-hmm. and it's like you have to be this way right this is the regular this is normal right, right. you've got to do this right yeah and i you know even you know native american people um honored the two spirit mm-hmm. and there are different cultures who have different words for this type of energy and it's mm-hmm. like watching this like almost like divine balance within Mm -hmm. one physical being is Mm -hmm. like "Ah," people's Mm -hmm. heads start exploding Mm -hmm. and shit yeah and you're like no like that's just if that's the energy that's within that vessel Mm -hmm. like beautiful let it come out Mm -hmm. um i wish we could all just be more and i think once we get in balance with like what the true identity and what gender means and sexuality means um that we can become more comfortable and this will just this is just the way we exist now. Yeah. The way we were always meant to exist. But this book written all this mm-hmm. time yeah. ago is like, yo, that's an old book. We've been asleep. Yeah. And we've been had. Do we still use the same like medical textbooks from like the 18? 18- Are people still bloodletting and like using leeches? I mean, bloodletting I have seen for like ancient practices. Like and, acupuncture um, still works. Right, but- right. <laughs> but some yeah. of this stuff like that they were doing you're like no like mm-hmm. could you imagine if we were still having babies like sedated and like knocked out was it twilight birth mm-hmm. like yeah. that has changed mm-hmm. so why not our views on gender and sexuality and yeah mm-hmm. it is changing and we're ready for it and yeah. we're in it and that's the revolution that's taking place right now mm-hmm. you know um uranus has been in aries for the last seven years and it's leaving it's going into taurus but one of the biggest things that's been characterized by this seven year transit is the rise of the individual Mm. and the claiming of oneself and one's sovereignty and oh (laughs) sovereignty yeah the morgan she was like sovereignty i'm here Mm -hmm. yes so that's been a big theme in the last seven years and uranus has been squaring off with pluto for much of that time and pluto's been in capricorn and uh, Capricorn represents like the societal structures, like the things that in a collective way, not for like individual sign, but in the collective Capricorn really represents like the societal structures, the government, you know, all of that. Mm-hmm. And so the individual has been literally squaring off with these structures and Pluto wants to transform. It wants to uproot the decay, the things that aren't serving us anymore. And it wants to create, rebirth something new. Mm -hmm. And so that's why things have been so chaotic for Mm -hmm. the last seven years, Mm -hmm. really. And I think that's why people gravitate to the dark goddess, because that's Mm -hmm. what she does, right? She will come in and she will completely destroy something that doesn't serve that person. So, you know, a lot of us, we don't want to go through that. It's like when when that energy comes in, um, it's destructive. It's confusing. It can be painful, but these are all things that like when it's all said and done and we look we look back, we're like, yo, that's dope. Like I needed that. I'm in this much better place. Like yeah. I, my life is aligning and it's all good when you're when you're out of it. Mm-hmm. It's just that um, it's that tough love. You know, yeah. it's like she's coming in or Pluto's coming in. It's that tough love to break up. Well, the Pluto energy can also take form as like Kali. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. this this dark goddess energy in in Kali is often depicted as just like woman, her tongue's out. She's raging. She's destroying. But she's also birthing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know she was birthing at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I was speaking to a woman. I was doing her hair the other day. I hadn't seen her since she was pregnant. So mm-hmm. she had a baby. And, you know, a lot of women don't share the nitty gritty details of what it's like to have a brand new baby but you know I always appreciate when people share it with me because I hope that's something I get to experience one day but and you know nobody really prepares you for it unless (laughs) until you're pregnant probably but anyway she was telling me like basically what it's like to have a newborn in the house and like you're topless and things are just like there's 
you're wearing a diaper. You're trying to figure <laughs> out diapers. There's like blood and poop everywhere. Yeah, your boobs are leaking. Like it's chaos. Yeah, it's, it's dark. Chaos. It's dark goddess. And so I was hoping that I don't know. You guys could probably relate to that because you guys have kids. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And I I would love Catherine for you to tell the story about when Lilith decided to leave Adam. Oh, because that story resonated with me so much. I hope she wants you to tell it. <laughs> I, I love that. And then maybe maybe Stephanie can follow up because I feel like the yeah. way these stories and the experiences that you guys had, I feel like that's going to bring so much comfort to people and right. kind of validating yeah. wherever they are and what they've gone through. So just to like... <laughs> she's she lit the fireplace she's like tell him right. well that's how i met lilith yeah was on the beach um you know lynette took me into the hypnotic state and you kind of go to like a happy place or you go somewhere first to kind of start out and then i was led to the beach where i met lilith and she was by a fire and also this is like you know, I'm tapping into the collective consciousness, but this is also in a way that like my brain can perceive it. Yeah. So, you know, other people for those who are curious, like can perceive her in a similar or different way. But anyways, Lilith takes me through this journey and one of the most intense experiences that she showed me was the time that she left Adam and she was basically cast out of Eden, which was like, you know, as we're told, like a beautiful place where they had everything they needed. And it's kind of similar, like in modern day, like if you were to get a divorce or you were to leave your abusive, wealthy husband and then like you are starting from scratch, basically. Yeah. So she found herself in a tree. And this is known in a lot of the myths of Lilith, like she lived in a tree. And I saw this tree and one of the things that she showed me is like literally what she went through just like feeling alone and just crying at the sky and just wondering what what did i say what did I you you mentioned that she felt like the sun would never come up that yes, that, that was, was it. it and and she had to really tap into her intuition to just eat what do i eat yeah. So she really had to, she was disconnected from like external nourishment. She really mm -hmm. had to figure it out on her own. Yeah. So that brings us to two points. So a lot of times when you go into this quantum state, you think you remember and you remember when you come right out of it. But then like later on, you kind of don't. You have to go back and listen mm -hmm. to the tape. But yeah, that was a really powerful moment. Um, she yeah, she felt like the sun would never shine and she had to kind of just trust her own inner guidance. And that's another aspect of the dark goddess is listening to that primal instinct, really trusting that. Because yeah. a lot of the societal structures in place kind of teach us to kind of go against that a little bit. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for me, that story hit me because I know I've had times where I thought, whatever struggle I was in I didn't see it ending mm -hmm. yeah and so for her to say she didn't know that the sun was ever going to come up and then it did and then yeah. you can talk about like what happened after the sun came up oh yeah <laughs> after the sun came up things got really beautiful for Lilith so she ended up moving to a city where she started using some of the gifts that she gleaned from having to rely on her own instincts. You know, she was an herbalist. And I think, you know, some other people have touched on this, that Lilith may have been an herbalist who was also able to, you know, one of the things she was able to do was help women take control of their bodies. She was able to help people have abortions which is where some of the storylines come in about her being like a baby snatcher, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she was a basically able to become a healer and become autonomous and take care of herself and take care of other women. And one of the things that came through too was that she was a part of like 
uh, a sexual healing temple, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and she actually, um, you saw her in a in an, a temple, right, in Egypt, potentially. Yeah. So for yeah. me, that's just about like what everyone's talking about, like this yeah. ascension process. So she had to really dig deep. She was in this primal survival mode. Yeah. She was alone. She she was tired, maybe hopeless at some point. Yes. Right? And then when that day came where the sun finally came up, then her life opened up. But she wouldn't have been able to get to that point unless she potentially went through those struggles. Right. And unless she took a risk and said, like, no, I'm True. not accepting that. Right. Made that decision to, to say, hey, it may not be like all gravy. <laughs> yeah. But I owe it to myself. I can't be there anymore. Right. right. Like so. a dark goddess isn't going to settle for less, basically. Right. And it's crazy how like. You know, you think about it like the sun may never come up. It's like, well, how do you even know what light is unless you know dark? Right. Like you can't. So people who that's why I kind of get a little agitated maybe about this whole like love and light, love and Mm -hmm. light. Like we're the love and light tribe for Mm -hmm. one. Don't say tribe, you Mm -hmm. know. (laughs) And it's just like, no, you have to know what darkness is to even know what light is. Like you have to know both. And that doesn't mean like you're out here putting you know crazy uh curses on people and no. doing all that work in the dark and people like to associate the dark with like evil but mm-hmm. we need it just like we need the winter just mm-hmm. we need the, like we need those um times of introspection mm-hmm. and to go within right you know oh, the yeah. moon and the sun it's all about that balance yeah um it's she, so archetypal. Yeah. yeah. She wouldn't have learned how to work with herbs. Right. If she wasn't relying on her own intuition and had to do that for survival. Right. Yeah. She wouldn't have. So if you feel like you're in that dark place, it's almost like there's something there for it. It's yeah. almost like it may feel very um, alone and you may feel like, man, I don't even know how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to get by. Right. Um, but what you learn during that time, I feel like is so powerful to take you to that next phase of your life. Yeah. And, and to me, when to your point, talking about the love and light, I think if people subscribe to that and something goes wrong, then there's shame. Like, well, I must have yeah. up somewhere. Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that a lot of times when a woman takes that risk, you yeah. know, people talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like they yeah. it's because p- somewhere in their psyche, somewhere in their body, like they kind of wish that they could that yeah because a lot of people would rather and people you see this every day in marriages people staying at the wrong jobs it's like no one wants anyone to think anything is wrong everything's good everything's good over (laughs) here here. they could be freaking (laughs) drinking themselves to sleep Mm -hmm. super unhappy dying inside but as long as it looks good on the outside and i I think that that's not sustainable and we're seeing that obviously like people are like i'm gonna i'm gonna perish on some level so right. I feel like it takes courage to be like, listen, it's I'm messy right now. I really don't know what's going on. I yeah. don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but I'm just taking it moment by moment. And I just feel like that story just is so empowering. And it just it, to me, it's it almost is like, OK, if my ancestors had moments like this, then I can I can also go through this. I also have the strength to go through this. Right. So. Yeah, super dope. Yeah. yeah. And you can, Stephanie, I mean, you, when Stephanie had, when she was in touch with what I believe is um, the divine feminine, I, we could feel, I looked over at Catherine, Catherine was spaced out, her eyes were like, she was in the (laughs) quantum field. And I knew like, it wasn't just me. Well, I love that because you never know, like, I know what I'm feeling, right? But I don't know if, right. So it's like, anyway, yeah, you could talk about that. Like the energy that came through. Yeah. It was different. Like it wasn't just Lilith. Like it felt like the energy that she embodies. um, But it was almost like this force of like nature. It was like, woman who became wind and um talked more about collectively like how like you said like unsustainable this is even like our political climate Mm -hmm. and you know um we've seen with like global warming and just the turn that our planet's been taking it is you know like um we talked about the wind and about the hurricane and Mm -hmm. sort of you know talking about you said your grandfather Mm -hmm. he was on the island of Puerto Rico when mm-hmm. Hurricane Maria came mm-hmm. and said, you know, was it was sounded like a crying woman, like a like a woman that was screaming. Yeah, like a, like he called it a monstro, a yeah. monster. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
Um, and I heard people, you know, I was one of my students. He actually moved here because of the hurricane. Yeah. Um, and he was like, yeah, he was like, I've never heard anything like it. Right. He was like, like the men in my family had like fear in their eyes. And it is because this woman has so, been so disrespected. You know, California is just the force is lighting itself on fire like she's upset. And that was that energy that I was getting. It's like people aren't honoring me. You know, like the woman is being shamed. The woman is being um sort of like hung out to dry like people have gotten away from this matriarchal everybody's fighting there's war men are in charge and it's not just like men can never be in charge but they've been in charge long enough mm -hmm. like let's mm -hmm. flip the script mm -hmm. like it's time mm -hmm. yeah. um, let's we just see what somebody else can do right and around <laughs> the same time of of these physical yeah you know um natural disasters and hurricanes and everything like we've seen a huge women uprising you yeah. know mm -hmm. Um, specifically with like the Me Too movement, you know, people coming forward and saying like, this is not acceptable. Like we're speaking out and even just in general, like I'm seeing so many badass women just yeah. like being themselves and mm -hmm. creating a legacy. Women are leading the yeah. movement in like mm -hmm. all their communities on the food front, on the economical front, mm -hmm. politically, you know, you may not agree with these women's politics. They may be problematic, but even to just see them there mm -hmm. is like we're making progress like they're not mm -hmm. perfect but mm -hmm. at least there's hope like at least we're getting ourselves in the right direction right well said. um yeah. you know yeah. and these women in these communities are starting up art galleries are starting up wellness centers are starting up um pop-up shops doing zines you know just every creative front women are there they're leading the movement mothers breastfeeding a baby giving a speech about you know um gentrification and trying to call people together you know like it mm -hmm. is um it's like what a time to be alive almost. it's inspiring you know it is yeah. it and is. it gives us permission right because like if we all waited for us to have like all of the answers and for us to be perfect and packaged really mm -hmm. pretty we wouldn't do anything right. so it's like we're stepping out and we're saying hey we don't have all the answers but we're going to just go and we're going to continue to adapt and to correct and to learn i think that we all can take something from that because a lot of yeah. us don't want to step out because we don't want to be wrong right you know we don't want to say the wrong thing right exactly well, that's so i think Eve it's energy <laughs> Like, I'm here for it. Like, honestly, if I say something wrong, if I slip up, if I fuck up, if I call you the wrong pronoun, if I say the wrong thing, right. um, call me out. It'd be like, hey, just so you know. Right. This was wrong. Here's the correct one. I'll be like, dope. Let's cool. use that. I'm happy to forward. correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like... Um, People just need the sense of community needs to be together. Like I have your back. Like I'm telling you this because I love you. Right. Like yeah. that sense of tough love. Women yeah. want to be packaged and pretty and don't want to be told like, yo, you said some fucked up shit. Like right. it's okay you, to be wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. but let's talk about it. Let's work it out. And mm -hmm. that's what I hope, you know, we can even do here. And mm -hmm. that's what I love about working with the two of you is that we are, you know, very different in the mm -hmm. stages of our life and mm -hmm. our own spiritual path and mm -hmm. our own backgrounds. Right. Um, and we come together to kind of say, like, let's learn to together. Like, let's learn together. Let's call other people in, you know. Yeah. As much as we want to teach about the dark goddess and things like that. Like, mm -hmm. I want to learn from other women. Like, right. I want to learn how they cope, how they Agreed. got through those dark moments. Right. What their treehouse looked like. Yeah. And, you know, like, <laughs> what'd you have in there? Yeah. What'd you eat? The treehouse. Yeah. 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 And I, I just, I thought about a session that Catherine and I did where the message was is that when women come together their bill it, it builds a prism mm -hmm. and it becomes magnetic and so as we connect and we build and we trust each other and we build each other up and we rely on each other we begin to draw in these beautiful things mm -hmm. blessings and abundance and we can we can use that energy back out to teach and to support. So I think that, and, and that's not only just women, that's just in that specific example, but it's just in general. Men could do this too. Right, like, yeah. right, exactly. We're waiting for y'all's yeah. uh, yeah. spiritual uprising. Yeah. yeah, We're here for, for it. For sure. Yeah. We wish for they would sure. gather in community and temple. If you're a man listening. Well, some of them are. <laughs> some, of some, them some of them are. are. Yeah, they some are. of them are. And, you know, I think this is something that we'll explore a little bit more, but, you know, um, 
in ancient times, they used sexuality as a healing tool, right? Mm -hmm. So some of us are doing this in our own bedrooms. Some of us are already doing that, but I think there's some something to explore there um, where I think that that may be, you know, sometimes we have to speak a certain language for people to understand. That doesn't yeah. mean you have to only use sexuality, right? That's, right. We're, we're more dynamic than that, but I think that there's a place for that. And so um, I'm excited to see how that's going to play out. So yeah. I think there's a lot of, I think we're discovering, we're exploring, we're figuring out what works and what doesn't. And I think the dark goddess gives us kind of I don't know, a ticket or permission to explore without really knowing and not afraid to go past certain boundaries. And we all have our role to play. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just about following our intuition and, and just testing things out. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to learn more about the dark goddess as well. Yeah. And um, we're going to be exploring the goddesses that we pulled tonight, Arishka Gale, the mm. Morrigan and Tiamat. And we're going to be exploring more dark goddesses. We're going to be learning together. And we're, we'd probably love to have other, you know, local people join us. Yeah. We have a fourth mic here. We so, do. or maybe we could get like call ins. We could get there. Oh, that's yeah. so dope. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to come back with more information, but we actually have uh, a workshop coming yes. um, at the end of March. Yeah. Should we should we say the date? Are we ready to say the date or should we kind of leave that open? March. What do you think? 23rd, was it? All right. right? Let's, That's yeah, the magic so number. March 23rd. All right. All right. March and, 23rd. And we're going to be taking um, kind of a ride yeah. and exploring the goddess through astrology, through tarot. Um, through quantum healing, through ritual, through ceremony. Mm -hmm. And so we are calling in the women that are ready to explore that and to come online. We're, we're at this place now where we're not leaving anything off the table. No. Right? No. So we're everything that whoever we are, whatever we are, you know, there may be some things that you want to leave behind and that's okay. Once it's acknowledged, you can choose to leave it behind, but right. it's about facing it integrating it and looking at it so you know we just want to say that we're we're excited to do this work and yeah. we're excited to connect with the women that are ready to do this as yeah. well come get messy with us yeah for a whole day <laughs> there's gonna be a food. whole day yes oh yeah workshops yeah we're doing a little little kundalini right Yoga? oh yeah we're yeah. gonna do some kundalini raise the vibration mm -hmm. yeah you, you actually didn't mention your kundalini yoga teacher yeah uh yeah i mentioned kundalini but yeah i teach it yeah <laughs> Totally. Kind of and you're doing me. an astrology workshop. We're yep. like, yeah. Yeah. We're going to yeah. be t talking about some dark goddesses. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't even get to talk about Guabanse. We're going to have to talk I about know. her next, mm -hmm. time. Yeah, next, next time. Next time. She's, she's been out here. Yeah. Because I think with that wind energy, that was almost who that was. And like seeing her symbol because um, the feminine energy that manifested for me when I did the hypnosis with Lynette, it was this wind, this like bigger than all of it um but yeah it was like almost like that energy yeah. and she had this symbol she wasn't she didn't have a name she mm -hmm. had an image mm. and i think when i drew it and i looked back at guabanse and oh, like yeah. her sigil and right. her symbol uh there were some i'm not saying it was like on exactly <laughs> but there were some parts that i was like oh yeah there was something there right so yeah so we're going to be coming out with more information around uh the retreat and if you guys have any questions um about the retreat you can contact us we're going to be posting our contact information yeah right yeah. so we totally welcome um any questions around that or anything that just came up around our conversation today yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a full day of diving deep together and sharing space and um we've got the tools to kind of get us into that space and right but it's a circle and we want <laughs> you to be a part of it yeah yeah bring your story bring your whatever was in your tree house, bring your survival stories. Um, you know, we're just going to kind of hold space together and I'm really excited to just like energetically tune up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chill. And I think not even, I think I know, um, we're going to be creating something that you're going to be able to go home yeah. and go into your life and have some practical information that mm -hmm. you can begin to implement. You're going to feel different. You're not, you're not going to leave that, that day no. with us feeling no. the same. 
Mm -hmm. Um, we, we have spent a lot of time working through that to make sure that you get something of value. But the point is, is you're going to have somewhat of, I don't want to say a game plan, but you're going to have new tools, new tools, um, Mm -hmm. new perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're going to definitely be able to go into your life and begin to implement the things that you learned. Yeah. And I mean, one of the values of, of, uh, gathering together, I mean, you can learn a lot online, you can plug in online and you know, connect with people and discover information. But when you share space with Mm -hmm. other women, Mm -hmm. that is when deeply transformative work occurs and echoes into other parts of your life. Agreed. When you can like be face to face, like looking in each other's eyes, like seeing them as more than a profile picture or you know what I mean? Right. It's like you can really feel somebody's energy. You can really dial in with them. You can feel touch, you know, you can receive a hug and exchange um, affection and support in that physical way, mm-hmm. which I feel like a lot of women and just people in general were sort mm-hmm. of like shamed. Mm-hmm. Like, don't yeah. do, don't touch mm-hmm. me. I mean, yeah. like you know, if I don't like you, ill, don't touch me. But mm-hmm. um, <laughs> right. we want to walk away from this at least wanting to give handshakes and maybe a hug. No yeah. doubt, because as women, we're <laughs> emotional. Beings. Yeah, we're yeah. touchers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially with people that we care about and love. And I feel like bringing together in sisterhood and especially with people who you may not associate with in everyday life, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to come together for a deeper purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be dope. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can't wait. (laughs) But yeah, so we're going to close up this session of the dark goddess podcast and we will resume hopefully soon with another little, I feel like this was a good intro. It was. Yeah. I feel good about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I can't see what to talk next. <laughs> I can't wait to talk next. <laughs> Once yeah. we get going, though, we're probably just going to like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're not going to be able to stop. No. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you.